I think there are two big forces that are operating behind the same word, cloud. The first is an IT journey, transformation that's occurring inside your data centers. And the goal of that journey is a fundamental reduction in complexity inside the data, leading to a new architecture, a new business model for IT. At the same time, playing out, we see an end user and consumer journey. And that journey is really about a journey from a device-centric world to an information-connected, mobile-centric world. So we're seeing these parallel, interconnected journeys unfolding ahead of us. And of course, the question for us in the IT world is, you know, how do we make business sense of all of this? How do we apply these techniques that are emerging to really result in better business outcomes? And how do we do that in a way that we keep our names out of the paper, that we maintain a secure, reliable, compliant world. Boards of directors and CEOs and CFOs are wising up to the fact that too much of today's IT spend is going on things that no longer generate fundamental business advantage. Over the last 20 years, we've allowed things to become too complex, too brittle, uh, it's hard to measure, and we need to start focusing on freeing up the funds to go after not just the infra infra infrastructure backlog, but the application backlog. It's for the first time, we're seeing the emergence of a set of standardized metrics that you can start to apply to IT infrastructure. You can now go to your CIO and ask him questions like, Mr. CIO, how much does it cost us internally to provision a virtual machine per unit time, per unit memory. So for the first time, we're going to start being able to shine a light into infrastructure and start asking these questions. And what I think it's going to lead to, following Andy's maxim, is not only more informed and better and more efficient production of infrastructure, but equally importantly, more informed consumption of infrastructure. New technology like virtualization typically comes in through the IT group itself. Some bright spark in IT figures out how to use this technology. They very rapidly apply it to all the things that they don't have to ask permission for. They run into this artifact of the governance of IT. That when IT is governed as a flat tax off the top of everybody, no individual business unit has any incentive to make their mission critical applications more efficient. Typically, actually, what enables customers to make this transition is they have something bad happen. Typically, one of these mission critical applications will go down. Uh, IT will say, we'll temporarily rebuild you on virtualized infrastructure just to keep you up and running. They rebuild them on virtualized infrastructure. They find out, in fact, that uh, they don't all catch the plague and, in fact, that they're able to do things very quickly. And the business unit says, why? Uh, did you were able to rebuild me in the space of an afternoon when you're telling me that for these other new services I want, it's going to take three months to do it. Once they get through that, then the IT group realizes this is not a tactical thing they're doing. This could actually be the foundation of a fundamentally new way of running IT. And they start to think about, let's transform ourselves essentially into a much more business-driven internal service provider. And let's use all these technologies uh, to standardize, to become fundamentally more efficient, and to become, above all, more metric-driven. And so we have to start uh, with that body of applications. Start where they are, which is typically inside internal data centers. Allow customers to become more efficient in turn those internal data centers and start to be able to reach out in the future to purchasing infrastructure on a different business model, having the option if, and I underline if, it makes sense to rent the infrastructure rather than provision it themselves. And having done that, then start to think about renewing applications, which in the long run is the bigger challenge. And figure out not only do we renew applications, but how do we in a secure and compliant manager manner 
absorb these SaaS applications that are coming in around the edges of IT and growing like weeds within the enterprise. And if all of that wasn't complicated enough, then how do we deal with the fact that just when we got good as an industry at provisioning Windows desktops and laptops, how do we deal with the fact that that world is fundamentally changing? The way that we think about this is three layers of a journey. First and foremost is infrastructure transformation, because that's the only way uh, of allowing people to become more efficient, more agile, more metric driven in terms of their production and consumption uh, of existing applications. By definition, we have to do that underneath the applications at the infrastructure level. But we need to evolve that infrastructure and evolve the technology that will allow for application transformation. And then we have to allow for different ways to deliver both existing and future applications and SaaS applications in a secure and compliant way to the end user. Now I mentioned that we want to go on a transformation journey uh, to allow customers to become fundamentally more efficient and more metric driven inside their own internal infrastructure. This is, we use the label, the private cloud, for all of those techniques. Most of our customers are, are intending to go this direction. Uh, but we need to not only do that, but we need to say, if you do all the things that to implement a private cloud, you will also be doing the things that will allow you to, with less difficulty rather than more difficulty, access external infrastructure in the future. So we need to open it up so that people can take applications and on a business-driven decision decide to move those applications from their internal infrastructure to the external infrastructure. We've gone out and tried to invest ahead of the curve, trying to pick best of breed examples of the technologies that we think will be needed here. This started two years ago with our acquisition of the Spring Programming Framework, which is the leading modern framework in the Java development world. So two years ago, we hired some very senior folks out of Google. They had run everything uh, that has an API on it in Google, all the, the internal infrastructure. We put them to work and said, if you were to redo this uh, from what you had learned in operating at very, very high scales inside Google, how would you do it? How would you correctly factor and lay it? And they've come up with a layer that we call Cloud Foundry, which we have released as an open and open source project under an Apache 2 license. Uh, and it's our goal for this to go everywhere. We want to see this on top of vSphere and VMware-based infrastructure clouds. We want to see it on top of Amazon. We want to see it on top of Rackspace. We're even, as you'll see in a moment, going to put it on an individual virtual machine so that every developer can have his own instance on his laptop. So with that, I want to close then on our journey, which is to take customers to allow them to transform their applications, become fundamentally more metric driven, have new options in terms of how you want to purchase infrastructure, and on top of that information transformation journey, then go after the bigger challenges of application transformation and how we deliver the results to the end user. So thank you very much, I appreciate it. <laughs>